G'day guys, welcome to our summary chat of our Cape York adventures. We feel like that adventure needs a bit of a, a summary because it's going to be split over a few episodes. Um, and if you're not interested in watching the full episodes, hopefully you get something out of this quick video anyway. We'll try and keep it short, sharp and sweet, but we'll give you a rundown of what we did to get ready, where we went, where we stayed, what we saw, um, and just try and combine it all into a quick video for you. So for prep, uh, we were taking the van as far as we could. We had mixed reports of the road conditions. So we were just gonna take the van and then just call it quits whenever it got bad, leave the van and just swag the rest of the way. So we did a few things prep, like uh, screws and pins inside the van on the cupboard doors and stuff like that. We put uh, super glue and elastic on them to stop them coming off. Our fridge door has come off once before in on the Udna data, I think, because we had weight in the fridge door um, and then it's bounced past its latch and then all that weight bouncing on the hinges it just pops straight off so we've done a mod now we'll put this little video in over the top um, we've put some rails across the fridge now thanks to having a couple of little small walls mm -hmm. um, and then that way if it does pass past, bounce past the latch it's not going to go any further it just hits those rails mm -hmm. um, and that worked a treat we also empty everything out of the fridge door so the fridge door is completely empty it takes yeah. all the weight out of that door and just, um, I guess, lessens the chance of it actually falling off the fridge. Uh, we put all of the glass jars into the salad drawers down the bottom and we pat it all with tea towels. Um, just because we've noticed on corrugations, the lids do start to unscrew. If you lay them down, pat it down to stop those corrugations getting through, they don't do anything, they just sit there. Um, and then we put all of the heavy things that were in the fridge on the lower shelves as well. So if it does slide forward or come off, it's not gonna go as far. Yeah, and then we do have the angle as well, which we actually moved into the car for this part of the yeah. trip. Um, and anything that was gonna spill, so say like the milk doesn't lay down very well, we put the milk in the angle. Yeah. Um, and that worked pretty well. And Mark strapped the angle in to the car? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, got tie-down points in my car. Yeah. Um, a little bit different now, I used to have the drawers and that was bolted in, but now I just have to run the straps. But it worked, mm. nothing budged in there. Mm. Uh, I also ran underneath the van and put rubber stripping on uh, all the plumbing that was around the, um, the wheels, like next to the wheels and behind the wheels. So they need rocks that flicked up if they did head towards those um, plumbing, like the, the cold water plumbing and the hot water plumbing. I just put a rubber strip and secured it with cable ties just to give it a little bit of shock absorption if a rock did flick up and we didn't actually have any dramas so that seems to have worked and we already have the infamous i suppose uh pool noodle that everyone else does over mm. there like great water plumbing the big pvc plumbing um and that seems to work you can see the stone chips on that um oh, pool noodle yeah. so mm. that's saved highly that recommend plumbing, absolutely yeah, so it's worked well and we didn't have any damage. I've been under there and we were under there all the time on the trip, just checking over things, making sure the suspension still looked okay, nothing was coming loose there. Um, so yeah, everything prep-wise was good. And we only have the stone guard on the front. We don't have stone stomper or rock tamers or anything like that. Um, and there's only a couple of little chips on the front of the van now. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that's going. That should be pretty easy to fix up later on. Uh, in terms of inside, before we hit the dirt, it was pretty basic it just took a little bit of extra time so normally a pack up would be about 10 minutes this these times it was taking us maybe 20 minutes in total so we for the bathroom um, we put Liam's tub in the shower recess and we put in it all the loose stuff in the bathroom so the um, shampoo the shampoo we took down all of the fusion locks because we just couldn't be bothered dealing with those if they broke the ones again. in the, the shower <laughs> the ones in the bathroom today the ones that hold our toothbrushes and, and the ones in the kitchen yeah, yeah that, we just took all the heavy stuff out. Yeah, because yeah. they can bounce and they, they can bounce. break. We've yeah. broken one on our travels. And it's very frustrating to get that replaced um, mm. with just with postage. And um, we yeah put all the loose stuff on the bathroom floor. We covered it with a towel to stop it from bouncing out. Yep. Um, in the kitchen, we padded all of the drawers with tea towels to stop um, rattling and to stop 
um, if the drawers do come open to stop things flying out. Um, Same with under the fridge where we keep our tin food in that mm. little cupboard down under the fridge. We packed a we bath mat in there. It in with a bath mat. Just actually to stop it bouncing around. Really well, because you don't want those tins to be causing any damage, especially because there's, that's where the fridge power point is. Yeah. Um, and there's also a bit of plumbing down there as well. Yeah, the gas, the gas through plumbing. there, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we um, stopped that from bouncing, that was good. We uh, took the oven, the glass out of the oven mm, door. Yes. And we wrapped that in a towel and just put it in one of the um, under seat hatches inside on the floor. And we yeah. sort of forgot about it. Just the second, yeah. the second layer, the inside layer, because that's sort, yeah. of, sort of just wedged in rather than actually secured in the, the door frame yeah. itself. So we didn't want that to smash. No, nah, and we've seen other travelers have that happen. Mm. Um, so we removed that just to take away that risk. And we removed our microwave mainly because we didn't use it anywhere. We yeah. found every time we connected to power, which is probably only 25% of the time, we kept forgetting that we could use the microwave and still heat it up our food on the stove. So, so probably unnecessary to remove it for a trip like this. Um, but we weren't using we it, it was extra it. weight, and so we now we ended up using, we use that storage now for um, bread and having a shelf that Liam can't reach, and it's been <laughs> yeah. brilliant. So that's our personal choice. Uh, on previous corrugated roads, we had just wrapped the microwave dish and just made sure that it was the screws weren't loose because it has happened before as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have to yeah. move, remove your microwave as long as it's secure. Take the the, um, the dish out of it and it should should be alright. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, we chose to get rid of it. The stove top tends to bounce a lot too on corrugated roads, so we just padded in a couple of tea towels either side. That worked really well. So no loose screws on the oven or anything that was helped out. We've super glued them all in there, but well, same with the oven and the grill. Yeah. We actually took the trays out. Yes not just the glass, we took the trays out so that yeah. they didn't slide. So they got taken in and out every day, we wrapped them in a blanket and they just went on Liam's bunk for, yeah. the, for the day's travel. And because we got that mesh mm. on Liam's bunk, we put all the heavy stuff that, um, like the pram and stuff that usually lives on the top bunk for storage for yeah. normal travel, we actually moved that down. They all went on Liam's bunk just, just to like in. lower the centre of gravity and put all that weight on the bottom bunk instead yeah. of the top bunk. Zipped it in, had no drummers there, actually really handy. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really cool. handy. We ended up putting a bunch of stuff in there, like the vacuum cleaner and the broom, just chucked it in there. Yeah, and then yeah. everything else was just normal. Like we didn't have yeah. any extra locks on cupboards. None of them opened, um, and it was sort of just a normal pack up after mm. that. Like the tunnel boot, we didn't do anything different in the tunnel boot. That's all packed in pretty tight. Um, the toilet hatch, though, we did put an office yeah. strap. Yeah on the toilet hatch so that it couldn't open. So it went from like the lower bathroom rail on the bathroom um, shelves and then around the back of the toilet and then to the front of the latch so that it couldn't flip open yep. um, because we've had that before and it is not pretty. Yeah, you don't want to deal with that mess. No, because you there's really not, don't. There's yeah. not dumb points everywhere. No. You have to sort of plan where you're going to use the toilet. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that helped. We didn't have any mess to clean up on the... And we just toilet. dumped the toilet Anytime we saw a dump point, yeah, even if we just done it the day before, we did it anyway because you don't want to be traveling with a full loo on a really bad corrugated road no, just in case. Definitely not. Yeah, I mean you can manage it, but it's not pretty. No. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got to figure out what to do with that waste that you had to use to clean stuff up with, and it's yeah, it's not fun. Yeah. So um, we did all that while we were parked up at Laura. We used Laura yeah. as our sort of first night on the uh, Cape York. Yeah. Now in terms of staying at Laura. I don't, we had read good things about the campground that we stayed at. It wasn't a fun campground. It was no. cheap power and water. It was $25 a night. Um, there were stray dogs hanging around, so we couldn't get our two out. Um, it was nothing fancy. Nothing but fancy. But it just gave us a chance to top up tanks, yeah. do all our prep connected to water and power so we could have the aircon because it was getting hot. It was hot that day. Um, so that was good for us. Yeah. yeah, and the night before that we stayed at the movie theater in Maliba. Yes, that was really that cool. Was really cool. Well, you'll see <laughs> yeah. that in the first episode if you watch that. Yep. Um, and then from there, it's 60 k's of bitumen until the dirt starts north of Laura. Yeah, so yeah. that was good. We had a nice smooth start to the morning. It was good. And then we mm. stopped and we let the tires down to 20 okay. uh, to 30 to start with. Mm. Um, yeah, 30 all round except for the rear of the car. I left them at 35 just to handle that extra weight. Mm. Um, and that worked all right, but then once we got north of Han, oh, Musgrave, north of Musgrave, mm. between Musgrave and Cohen, it started to get worse. So I left them down to 25 all the way around and 30 in the rear of the mm. car. Mm. And I think that worked really well. Like I said, we didn't have any dramas, so that seemed to be the magic number for our setup. Mm. You could probably go a little bit lower, but I wanted to protect the side walls as well, so I didn't want to go too far. 
and you do jump onto bitumen fairly regularly. It is fairly regular. So probably every 20 k's or so, there's another stint of bitumen. So just when you think you can't handle the corrugations any further, yep. you get a little break, which is nice. <laughs> Until you get to about the weeper turn off, and then from weeper. the weeper turn off, bitumen becomes a lot more scarce. There's still some yeah. of it comes up, especially mm. around the um, the roadhouses and the station yeah. so you can stay out yeah. but otherwise it's, it's a lot of dirt from there on in yeah. uh, and the road does get worse so from laura han river is not that far han river roadhouse is about 75k yeah and it was only yeah. 10 k's of dirt to get to han yeah. river and so, that's a good yeah. option for people to leave their vans we met a lot of people who left their vans at han river um and then traveled on in their car or, and stayed in cabins or tents or whatever um we chose to drive full through to cohen that day the stint between Musgrave and Colin was probably our worst bit of road. Um, just lots of dips and washouts yeah. to start with. Yeah, yeah. Um, we looked at staying in Colwyn on the river. We got into town. We dumped the loo. Yeah, we dumped the, the loo and filled up the tanks at Colwyn because there's um, fresh water, potable water there, and a good dump point. Um, we wanted to stay on the river. We checked the weather and it was forecast for thunderstorms. And I needed to work, which is one of the reasons why we're staying in Colwyn with Telstra reception. Um, but with the weather mm, coming and me trying to entertain Liam by myself for those couple of days, um, we decided that maybe we should push on and try and get to Weeper before Cam started work on a Wednesday. Mm, so we ended up pushing through to Arch River that night. Which was actually a really great place to stay. We loved Arch River. We yeah. stayed at the Roadhouse without knowing, we didn't know that there was a free camp down at the river. No. Um, the Roadhouse is fantastic. So that's one night at Laura, one night at Arch River. We got the... Um, Archard burgers for dinner oh, that wow. night. They're so huge. Good. I think they're about eighteen dollars, but they're they're massive. Yeah, and um, they're fresh. Like it's they're fresh. Homemade burgers are the best. Yeah. Um, so that was really yummy. I think it was twenty dollars a night for power and water. No, we didn't. Have no, we didn't. It was unpowered, wasn't it? Yeah, but you could yeah. get water there. There were taps everywhere, and it's all potable. Uh, we didn't need water because we just filled up a column, so we were fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we, then we went down to the river, which is literally only a couple of hundred meter walk, yeah. and let the dogs have a good run in the river, let Liam have a play. Mm. Um, Clem did that while I checked over the car and the van and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and then we moseyed on, and so much more bitumen after that that we didn't realise. We realize. didn't even know about. Mm. It's what, 60 k's of bitumen? Yeah, from... so it's bitumen all the way from Archer River Roadhouse, all the way to the um, Bramwell Junction turn off. Yeah, and the Weeper turn off, that turn split off. there. And which, if we had known that, we probably would have pumped the tyres Just up. a little bit, just, just to put a little bit more tyres. So I, yeah. I'd just run slower if I'm on the bitumen mm. with those pressures. Like, they were still sitting at, like, 30, 30 pound warm. Yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, I just, I just run a little bit slower. So we didn't go yeah. over, like, 60, 70 k's an hour while we are on the bitumen. It was pretty cruisy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We just <laughs> cruised. I was pretty bored. Yeah, I was bored going that uh, slow on the long straight road. Yeah. Um, but then we went out to Weeper so that Clem could work because there's Telstra reception at Weeper um, and we weren't sure if we were going to go out there but I actually quite liked Weeper. Weeper campground's beautiful so yeah. big grassy sites, lovely beautiful trees, the sunset over the water, oh, the beach is great. Weeper sunsets are unreal. They are really lovely. Yeah the colour in the yeah. sky is just incredible. There's a pool there, there's a good playground and they've also got a um, Barramunchi restaurant. Yeah Barramunchi yeah. is right. We yeah. didn't go Heard it was fantastic. We yeah. just, I don't know. Just and it's walking really distance like it. to yeah. Woolworths, Bottle Shop, really close to Post Williams. Office, yeah. uh, Tackle World, or yeah. equivalent of Tackle World. I can't remember what the actual store was. So yeah, that was a really good place to stay and we spent a couple of days there. Clem could work. She only works four hours a day, or probably five hours a day on those working days. Um, so I just entertained Liam around town. We went for a bit of a drive. We went to spend time at the playground. There were plenty of other kids. So it was just a good way to just wind down. Mm. Um, before we hit the, the worst road after that. So there's a good splash park in um, Weeper as well and there's heaps of exploring to do, great fall driving, um, lots of communities to visit, excellent fishing. Yeah, heaps of people and if you don't have the down. van, you can head north of Weeper as well and there's uh, camping spots on the beach there called yeah. Pennyfather and Yeah, apparently the they're very good. Yeah, we didn't get out there, but next time we'll go, next I think. For sure. yeah, yeah, it looks unreal. Um, again, counts them at the beach, too many crocs. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was a really good spot to stay. Uh, we should mention also you can get fuel at all of the places we've mentioned. Yeah. Um, fuel is actually... Oh, there's plenty of plenty fuel. Plenty of fuel. Yeah, I've got a jerry can. I never filled it up. We didn't use it at all. I expected that we'd had to. We'd no. have to. We, but... we filled up at Lakeland um, mm. just before Laura and then we filled up again. Well, we just put a little bit in at Archer River. We did, yeah. And then we filled up 
completely in Weeper, and then I only put a little bit in um, at the Bramwell Junction, just yeah. because we were going to yeah. do um, the OTC. I wasn't sure how much fuel I was going to use, so we just put a little bit extra in there. Mm. But anyway, yeah. plenty of fuel. Don't don't stress about fuel. Yeah. If you've got at least 400 kilometre range, you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, from Weeper, we took the Batavia Downs Road, which is a Rio Tinto road, back out to the PDR. It's a bit of a shortcut, and that road is magic. I set the GoPro up inside. If you can, we'll, we wanted we'll to film some of the like. corrugation. It wasn't really worth <laughs> it. There wasn't any. <laughs> Hardly, nothing moved. It was such a smooth road. Yeah, um, it was a great road. Yeah, so we enjoyed that drive. Mm. Come up over a couple of big ridges and just look at uh, it's pretty beautiful. cool. Um, and then we got back to the PDR and that 10 k's north of that intersection was rough. <laughs> it was just all over the show. It wasn't clean corrugations, it was just lumpy and... Uh. Big dips um, and there's a bit of a limestone like white sand or white dirt and it makes it really hard to see the shadows. And it was kind of overcast that was, too. Uh, there was a lot of that between Musgrave yeah. and Colin. So it was a bit hard to judge where the potholes were and they were like potholes the size of houses. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we just took it slow. And preempted the big ones. Yep. And um, and just you can get off yeah. the side of the PDR quite regularly as well. Like there's little side yeah, tracks. Yeah, there's little side tracks that people have made um, that are quite smooth. Yeah. And um, so that helped. You could get off and have a bit of a break from the corrugations. Yeah. Um, and then we just pushed on because it wasn't too far from that intersection until Brownwell Station Tourist Park. Is that what it's called? That's right, Brownwell Station Tourist Park. It wasn't far. It's like less than 80 k's. Yeah, it was a yeah. nice easy driving day it that was a day. Good drive. And that's yeah. a great place to stay. The, apparently the um, the music and dinner that they put on is mm. really awesome. We didn't go only because that's sort of witching hour for us with Liam when it starts. It starts at seven PM I think. Um, and it's just too hard. Like that's I think we're both just exhausted. Like, yeah. We're really tired. Yeah, and we had yeah. we had already gone to a butcher and stuff, so we had some good meat, so we cooked up our own feeds and we could still hear some of the music, so but it was just a really great Did place. Did we do to the stay. lamb roast that night? No, not there. I think we did that at Weeper yeah, and had yeah. leftovers at Grandmore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyway, it was yeah. good. Uh, so yeah, if you're into the dinner and music show, apparently it is very good. A great place to stay. They've got um, heaps of water, heaps potable of, water, so you, you can, can just top park up, up at a tap if you want to. They've got a dump There's point. There's no on power the road. camping ground. There's a dump point. There's cabins and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Heaps of people opt to leave their van there, and yeah, that's what we were going storage. to do. Yeah. Um, um, you can leave it as long as you want, I think. And it costs you the $25, but that includes the night that you pick up the van because so obviously you stay. you'll stay there. So yeah. it's pretty good. Technically, it's free. You and just it's really stay secure there. as well. Um, working like a really um, active station. There's people everywhere doing heaps of work around. Yeah, real popular option. It was a good spot to stay. And they've got um, the shelters that you can park up against. Yeah. Which was cool, so we didn't bother with gazebos. the awning. And we, the next day, we hit up the OTT. So, yeah. so we spent two nights at Brown Bowl so that we yeah. could do a day trip onto the southern section of the OTT. So it was a safe spot for us to leave the van during the day as well. So yep. we just parked it up there and went yeah. in. Yeah, we, we started early. We went out at what, 7.30? Really early, 7.30, yeah. yeah. We left, yeah. So we were probably at Brown Bowl Junction, quarter to eight. Uh, Only about 10 k's. Like Topped up a little k's. bit of fuel um, and then got onto the track. My tire pressures were still the same from towing, so I just left them at that to start with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, about 25 and a fun 30 in the back. Um, and it's just a, you know, the first section is just a four wheel drive track. It's just a, a small track to get a bit of wheel movement going on. Um, and then you hit Farm, Farm Creek. Creek. That entrance into Farm Creek is just gnarly. <laughs> it's <like deep. laughs> yeah, it's like gunshot, but then just ruts it out and like yeah, closer to the um, beginning of the dry season, it's probably full of water down the bottom there. Um, it's just mud. Yeah, but we took another option, and I think there's three. There's three. Yeah. So we took the middle option, mm -hmm. and it was just a little steep in, uh, decline, um, and usually there probably would be water, but it was dry at the bottom of that section. And then we had to dog leg to the right and then a sharp yeah. left. You drive exit down the creek, creek and then you go up. There's only that one main exit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, same exit yeah. as everyone else, but we took the second one. And then mm. the third one, I think you actually drop down into the water and then you've got yeah. to drive through the water a bit. Yeah. But we didn't see that one. I just followed yeah. everyone else. <laughs> yeah, well, it was the best option that we found anyway. Yeah, it was fun. It was, it was still steep. It's probably the steepest drop in I've done in that car. Um, 
We ended up tagging along with another group. We'll be behind them, but they were happy for us to. Well, I think they were just interested in watching us come through all day. Yeah, they just sat on a radio stuff. channel. They went off in They're front really of us. Lovely. We would usually catch up, and they were just mm -hmm. hanging around long enough to see us come through whatever obstacle it was. Yeah. Um, and then they were just moving on again. They travelled a little bit quicker than we did. They didn't have dogs or kids in their car, so they could move a little bit quicker yeah. over the drive to suit everyone's comfort. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we just cruised, had a bit of fun on the floor drive track. Really enjoyed some of the water crossings, just beautiful clear water. Yeah, and they weren't deep for us. Like, it was so yeah. late in the season. Okay. We were there the uh, middle of September. Yeah. Um, and I'll was, put the dates yeah. in out. We got the dogs yeah. out quite a few times to go for a swim and a play. Yeah, what was the name of that river that they the had Del fun Hunty. in? The Del Hunty. Yeah, that's oh, a beautiful, beautiful. stop. To, There's a good um, little campsite there too. Yeah. yeah, and the dogs had fun in the water. There's a little waterfall there. Liam had fun. It yeah. was only, you know, knee deep for Liam, so mm. it was a great option for us. So we, we started on the track at about 7.30 in the morning, but we didn't get to gunshot until, what do you think, just after lunchtime? It was 1 o'clock. Yeah. 1 o'clock. So that's only 35 k's or so. <laughs> so you go pretty slow and you get out frequently to check where the car should be going and just make sure it's going to be a safe path and you're choosing the right line. Yeah, um, and just having a bit of fun, yeah, take some photos, get yeah. some videos. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, yeah. So there was a few other little crossings and stuff, but then we got to gunshot um, and there's sort of four options to gunshot. There's yeah, yeah. a real rutted out one that a lot of people opt for. Um, but that didn't look fun. Everyone was just bashing the side of their car against the wall. I don't really want to do that to the car. You know, this is our pride and joy. It's got to get us around the country. I wasn't interested in doing any damage. Then the next one I think is, well, very similar to the it famous like gunshot. Gun it actually yeah. looks steeper, but you don't drop into water. Yeah, and um, it's probably not as tall. Yeah. I say tall because the drop in's like this. Yeah. You're literally falling in. Yeah, I don't think you can control it. Really, and I think no. you're definitely going to drop at least a meter. Yeah. And then. I think I could be wrong. I could have these around the wrong way. The next one across was the actual gunshot that you drop straight down into water, and then you got to go through the, the creek yeah. gunshot creek to get out the other side. And it would definitely be a drop and a slide in. Yeah, but that one didn't seem as steep. But I think it's just yeah. that bottom because you're dropping into water. I don't know how deep it was. Uh, well, kids were playing in there. It was like it knee deep on kids, deep. you know, yeah. ten year old kids. So it wasn't that deep, but you're still gonna. If you've got a front mount bend core, that's getting full of sludge. And then the fourth entry was what everyone was calling the chicken track, but it's a pretty ballsy chicken track. It's like a uh, more gradual decline into water. That would probably be about waist deep, say. Yeah, it was bonnet deep on the car that we deep. watched go through it. Um, yeah. We watched Keeping Up With The Ryans go through it. He actually yeah. had just done his yeah. CV on Amazing. the front, so he went through in two-wheel drive. So if he can yeah. do that in his, I think yeah. it was a PT50 most of It time. was a Mazda PT50. Yeah. Um, I could, sorry if I got that wrong. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, um, but he went through in two wheel drive. He had a winch hooked up just in case. But mm. yeah, if he can do it in two wheel drive, we would have been fine. Yeah, he made it look really easy. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think the deepest, it got just over the bonnet. And then if you, if you veered slightly to the right and he came up on a little ride, um, and it was under the bonnet at that stage, the water. So it's probably about 20 meters away from the water crossing. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So that would have been our option. Um, yeah. But there was a a bank up of people by then because we stopped yeah. and watched and had a bit of a play yeah. and Liam hadn't mapped yet and he desperately needed a map. He was getting really quite tricky to manage. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, um, instead of waiting for our sort of turn to go through, we ended up just bailing out from there. So we backtracked about eight kilometers yeah. to a the southern gunshot bypass road. Which yeah, takes so there's plenty out. of bypass roads as well. We found wiki camps really helpful mm -hmm in guidance um, we also just talk to people yep. and um, it's pretty well signposted as well so it tells you where the bypass roads are and how to get up those ways so we took that bypass road and it takes you out past the ranger base yep. to be honest <laughs> it's probably like the crummiest road yeah that was a pretty rough road <laughs> the corrugations were terrible and we're just in the car i felt like we were yeah. And the tyres were down, it was really I bad. could have probably let the tyres down a little bit more to make that comfortable, but Liam had just fallen asleep, but yeah, I wasn't we stopping the car. Down. Yeah. Um, but you could detour back and go around to the northern section of Gunshot, so if yeah, you just wanted so to bypass really gunshot, gunshot, you, you can loop around. It's a long way around, I think it's 14 k's each one, so you're, mm. it's a 28 k detour, but you could definitely get around that if you wanted to. Yeah. But we went back out to the PDR, and that was our option to see what the road condition was like. And that was if we're going to leave the van at Bramwell or not, yeah. we checked the road first. Yeah. Um, and we jumped on it and the PDR was actually pretty good. I think they had at had a greater um, go on it 
within a week. You know, Definitely. it was it was not bad at all. So we decided then and there. All right, we're taking the van the rest of the way now. We'll we'll manage. Uh, so we went back. We did the last checkovers of the van that night, and then we got up in the morning. We hit the road, and we had smooth sailing until about what twenty. Just past that turn off. <laughs> yeah, just past that turn off. About twenty k south of Fruit Pack Falls, and then we hit oh. some rough stuff. I was where, worried. Yeah, I was very, very worried. You could actually yeah. feel the um, the brakes being applied from the the, yeah. say, the electronic stability control in the van because the van was bouncing around yeah, a little bit behind bit. us. You could feel it applying the brakes and, and sorting it out. So it mm -hmm. works well. We've got it the very well. the BM Pro ESC on this van. Um, it, it works. So yeah, really stoked with that. But we were just taking it easy and getting off the track whenever we could on those little bypass roads. And that's yeah. actually where we bumped into Rhiannon, Scott and Logan from Yay. Um, where, the, camps. where the camps take us. Yeah. Uh, check these guys out. So they're actually coming back down. We met them before and, and stopped on the side of the road there, had a good chat. Um, and they, only, they told us that it only went for another four more k. Yeah, so <laughs> relief talking to those guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was also Father's Day. On yeah, this day. and Liam yeah. was screaming at us from the back seat. Day. Oh. Having the worst day. We think he was a bit over being in the car because it had been such long travel days. Yeah, and we weren't stopping for as often as we normally would. No. Anyway. You know, it was pretty well driving every day. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so we pushed over that last 4Ks, got over onto the good PDR road again. Oh, and then the bitumen started oh, again. Oh, bitumen started again. Yeah, yeah, so that was a relief. It was what, 20Ks of bitumen? Uh, no, probably, probably 10 k's. Best. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we had like five or so k's, and then we hit Fruit Pat Falls. And Fruit Pat Falls is only two k's off the PDR, and there's a free camp right on the edge of the PDR. So that was the option for us. Mm -hmm. So we parked the van in the free camp. We were the only ones there to start with, um, and then went into Fruit Pat for a swim that afternoon, which made lovely. up for the whole crap morning. I got to spend mm -hmm. Father's Day. Swimming with Liam at Fruit Bat Falls, and we had it to ourselves for what, 20 minutes? Yeah. Just no one else there. Sun came out, glistened on that crystal blue water, mm -hmm. um, and you just had that trickle of falls. Ah, it was just magic. It was glorious. We really like Fruit Bat Falls. Yeah. But obviously, yeah. dogs aren't allowed in there, so we only went in for about a half an hour swim, so mm -hmm. the dogs weren't left by themselves for too long. Yeah. Um, it seems pretty common that a lot of people just leave their dogs, say, on their utes in the car park, because I don't think it's actually a national park, it's a it's Heathland a, it's a reserve. reserve. Yeah. Um, but they're just not welcome in at the, the falls. falls. So yeah. yeah, it seems to be a really common thing to just leave them in the car park. Mm -hmm. um, we saw heaps of dogs there. Heaps of parking in at Fruit Bat Falls. It's all shaded. So. All shady. Um, you can definitely get the caravan in there and any kind of trailer. You can fit a coach yeah. in there. There's coach parking and plenty of turnaround space and there's toilets as well. Yeah. Yeah. So great spot to go and visit. Um, worth staying if you can for a few hours and just chill out. Yeah, it's beautiful falls. swim. Mm. Um, so then we spent the night at free camp. We had two other people roll in that night, uh, an older couple in their motorhome, and then a younger couple as well that we met later on again when we're up at sea. Yeah, what were yeah. they called? Mm, I'll put I'll put it up in the bottom here. I'll find them. Um, we've been following them for ages. Didn't even realize it was them until we bumped into them again yeah, back really up at um, Bamaga. Yeah. Um, so then the next day it was only a short drive to the Jardine Ferry. Yeah. Uh, and that was a pretty decent road. But the Jardine Ferry, to get on it and off it, is steep. Right? Yeah, we've got some pretty good clearance on this van. It sits nice and tall, but we still scraped the, uh, the drawbar getting on. So you have to come in on a bit of an angle. So if you don't have at least a semi-off-road van, you're going to scrape. Like, there's plenty of vans up there that weren't um, yeah, semi-off-road. Yeah, so they manage. Yeah, yeah. but you, and you they, will scrape. You can try and go in on a bit of an angle, but there's not much room to, to move. Yeah. yeah. And turn um, your brakes up because it's steep to get steep. down. Steep. Well, you put in low range, hey? I did on the, the second time. The first time yeah. I didn't. Didn't yeah. think about it the second time. Definitely. Because I've got this mod in my car that I've talked about in previous episodes, I can put it in low range without the risk of transmission yeah. lineup. So I just cruised down and onto it instead. So the cost for the ferry, $130 return. Yeah. So 75 one way. And that was just for a car and a caravan. So it was a little bit extra, hey? Yeah, 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 car and caravan, 130. I think it's yeah. 110 or maybe 90 just for a car. Okay. Yeah. Um, so with the caravan, we were the only ones on that ferry. Whereas yeah. just with cars, they were loading up four, four or so cars at times. Yeah, and because yeah. there was no one else there, like we we rocked up early, so early in the morning because we stayed just 60 k's down the road. Yeah. Um, but I think they can load a car and a van and then maybe another car. Yeah, um, we were the only ones. Yeah, but we were the only ones on it, um, so they just pushed it through. And then we had a pretty decent road, they just created that road from the Jardine Yeah, lucky. We heard that one was pretty bad, but it was good for us, so yeah. just like that. 
and then we rolled into Cecia down at the jetty and decided to figure out where we were going to stay for the night or for the few nights we hadn't booked anything yeah. we never do now we heard a couple of the campgrounds there Cecia were very uh, rumored to be bad for theft and we'd had um, reports, so recent reports, reports recent that we just talked to people a couple of days ago or that day yeah, yeah about people trying to get into their tent and their swags overnight um, so wild dogs that might growl at the kids and yeah. so we weren't interested in that it was stressful enough being on the road so um, it's a shame because we've heard it's a very beautiful campground, campground mm -hmm. uh, but we just didn't want to deal with that stress especially with our dogs they can be quite reactive yeah. to other yeah. dogs um, and then Liam and yeah we just we, we didn't want to deal with it we don't need that we've suffered enough yeah <laughs> and we weren't going to stay at Punsand um, yeah. two options one we couldn't get in and yeah, two, yeah. because there's actually no Telstra reception out there unless you're standing right to the bar and Clem needed to work so again, again that a week. beautiful week, so it had to work. We needed Telstra reception, so yeah. somewhere with decent Telstra. Uh, so we ended up at Loyalty Campground, which was a great Loyalty little Beach. spot. Loyalty Beach. Yeah, yeah. a huge campground. Huge. Oh yeah, and we now the perfect spot down mm. under a big tree or just next to a big tree. So we had extra shade yeah. and we just had an uninterrupted view of the water. Right on the beach, beautiful spot. The first day we got there was the best. There was next to no wind. Um, we got smashed by wind. Yeah, the ripped the roof two, off the gazebo days. next to us. As yeah, well, which so was that was scary. a pretty scary thing for us to happen. Met some fantastic traveling families there. Yep. Um, Again, I'll pop their names up down here. Yes, very uh, unfortunately, grateful. meeting so many people, you only tend to remember their Instagram handles, <laughs> not their actual names. Yes. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, but lovely people, and it was nice to just meet other travelers on the road. Yeah, they were from WA to our neighbors, yeah, which was yeah. kind of cool. That was cool. Yeah. That was really nice. So yeah, we spent, or well, the next day we went out to the, the tip, tip, or the, tip the sign. The it was a Tuesday. And we had heard get up before sunrise, chewed out there. So sunrise is either when you get there or on your way out. Yeah. You beat the crowds, you beat all those tour buses. So we did exactly that. And we have the sign to ourselves for half an hour. Yeah. Took some beautiful photos. We got a great shot with everyone in it. Um, and we just sat there and enjoyed a sense of achievement of making it to the tip. Yeah, it was really it's cool. such a big journey to get there and all that prep, all that stress, all that planning led to that one point mm -hmm. standing at that sign, you've made it. Because mm -hmm. um, there's nothing special, it's a sign, and yeah, it's a beautiful coastline. sign, you've got the islands right there. Um, but yeah, it's just that sense of achievement, you can't describe it until you've done it yourself. It was really cool. Yeah, and then so we walked over the rocks to get there and then yeah. we came back by the beach because it was low tide. We had the dogs on the lead, Liam was in the backpack carrier. Um, Oh, it worked out pretty well, I think. Yeah, it did. And then when we got back to the car park, uh, one tour bus and three vehicles had showed up. Mm -hmm. And as we were driving out, two, two other tour two buses, buses three other cars and five motorbikes were all heading in. So we nailed the timing. So I reckon, yeah, go try and get there around 7 a.m. Yeah. And if you can't do that, go say like mid morning. Because we had friends go at about 10 30 that day and they said yeah. there was no So the tour buses had left by um, then. The tour buses had gone by then, so I guess that would work out as well. Yeah, um, it just sort of depends on what you want because the croc tent's not open at the time, that time of morning. No. So we went early, we didn't have our t shirts or anything yet, no. so we don't have those in the sign, which is fine for us, we didn't need that. So we stopped in at the croc tent on the way back. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got to hang out for a little while, chat to the um, yeah. people there because they've got some local really knowledge. Yeah. Um, and then we bought our t-shirts, couldn't go singlet, I just got a normal t-shirt and we got Liam one of those um, little adventure, adventure shirts. shirts. Yeah, so heaps of growing room for him. Heaps. <laughs> um, but yeah, some awesome stuff in there. It's so, probably the only place you can get proper Cape York merchandise um, yeah. and it's reasonably priced. It is, yeah. Um, and we're not just saying it, it actually is yeah. reasonably and they were really generous with the information they gave us a map yeah and she also took us map. through yeah all the good spots to visit especially for liam um showed us where all the world war uh two planes are and um, yep. a bit of history of the area uh, so it's a really good spot to stop in on the way back um mark and i reckon they just need to put in a coffee machine yeah, there's no good coffee up <laughs> no, in no. Cape York whatsoever. And we don't have our own coffee machine. Um, we just eat, drink instantly used to it, we like it. But it's it is to nice to drink coffee. Yeah. Yeah. coffee. Uh, yeah, so we're back at the campground at about 9 a.m. Yeah, and then Clem worked for those couple of days. So yeah, it was really quite tricky to entertain Liam there with that wind. Um, it just wasn't that much fun. Uh, it's just, just it is blowing it dust. Is. It wasn't pleasant to even sit outside under the awning. Um, uh, we had to take the awning away eventually. Couldn't walk the dogs out on the road because of feral dogs. Um, I was even asked, or I was recommended, I'd taken Liam for a walk in the pram with Costa, I think, and they recommended I come back 
someone had driven past and said, just come back to camp because there was feral dogs on the road that morning. Yeah. So just different, a different area, different things to be concerned about. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. a shame because if the weather was beautiful, we could have a lot of fun. And if we didn't travel yeah. with... Sorry about that. The GoPro died. So we were just saying that we couldn't really walk the dogs while we were up at that loyalty beach because there were wild dogs around um, and it was recommended to bring them back. So I'm guessing maybe they've been aggressive in the past. Not any of the ones that we saw, they seemed friendly enough, but with young kids and other dogs, you never really know. So we just didn't take a chance. So our time at the top was a little bit, I don't know, just not what we were hoping for. Um, but like I said, if you weren't traveling with dogs, um, the trips out to Thursday Island, Rocco Island and stuff looks magic. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, the wind ruined it for a couple of the people that we spoke to, but it, it still would be a really great option. Because it's all the, right um, there. The helicopter rides as well, mm. everyone was raving about them. Like, they must be fantastic. Yeah, a really cool way yeah. to see that top part of Australia. And they were still so flying, yeah. even though it was windy, so it's a good activity to do, even though the weather wasn't great. Yep. Um, if you can stay at Punsan Bay, I would recommend it. Just yeah, do a night or two. Yeah, the facilities there were cool. Yeah. The pool looked great, great the bar pool. facility, pizzas are apparently on point. We, Definitely thought about just going out there for dinner. It mm. just didn't work out. It didn't work out for us at that time. Um, the beach is also good, not obviously for swimming, but just nice sand for playing. There were heaps of kids just building castles and running yeah. mark. Liam had fun rolling in the sand. Rock pools. Yeah, it was a really good spot. So and if you're into fishing, fish everywhere. Yeah, fish everywhere. We're not, yeah. We're not and fishing. they had a boat right We don't there. pretend to well, be fishing. A boat launching um, so yeah, plenty of good options there. Uh, next time we go, we won't stay as long at the top. We will just probably maybe do a couple of nights and then head back down somewhere else. Yeah, because um, for us it was always about the adventure to get there, yeah. not the actual destination. It's about the journey, not the destination. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we left on the Friday after you knocked off work on the Thursday. Is that right? Yeah, we were yeah. keen to go. So we left Friday morning, crossed the Jardine Ferry again in the morning, and tried to get into that same free camp at Fruit Pad, but it didn't oh. work out. It was chocolate. They managed was, to fit. Yeah, five caravans in there. We yeah. were so They impressed. must have been travelling together because I reckon the first two would have to come out before yeah. the next people could pitch up. They parked in there perfectly. Um, yeah. Definitely a big group and they were obviously all out exploring the OTT. Which was a um, little bit tricky for us because we wanted to go into Elliot Falls and Twin Falls. Um, yeah. So we spoke to some people and they said we'll just go and hitch it at Fruit Pad, which is only yeah. two k's down the road and it's the same entrance. So we, did we didn't exactly know that. this at the time that we could safely unhitch and leave the van at Fruitback Falls. Um, so really grateful to that family that just stopped. We were unhitching on the side of the road and yeah. we weren't comfortable at all. And I think they must have seen that we weren't. And they just dropped their van in at Fruitback. Um, and so, they had a dog as well. Yeah. So we did the same as what they did. Yeah. And yeah, dropped it in at um, Fruitback Falls, put the alarm on. Um, yeah, we've got the white tire anti-theft yeah. alarm and the, the, the hitch fire lock. Alarm. Yeah. Um, we were pretty comfortable leaving there. I felt really safe yeah. with that spot. So then we just yeah. drove into Elliot Falls, which is what, 8 k's? 8 k's on the northern ed and edge of the OTT. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the northern section, southern edge of the yeah. Yeah. OTT. Um, but there is a water crossing. I reckon mm -hmm. it would be pretty full earlier on in the season. Um, yeah. But there is a bypass track that has concrete. Um, so it was only an inch, a couple of it inches wasn't. deep. So yeah. it was fine for us, but be wary that there is a water crossing to get yeah. to Elliot and Twin Falls. Um, people did had brought their caravans into that point, but you wouldn't be able to get it through that water crossing just no, for that angle. You would unhitch there, I think. Um, and there's there plenty of room. A few big bumps on the other side as you came up on that crossing as well. Yeah. Um, and then it's just a four drive track through to Elliot Falls. Yeah, and there's not really parking for vans either at Elliot, so you're better off unhitching. Mm. Um, there is a campground there. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. there is a camper in there. Um, um, so we yeah. took it in in turns because we had the dogs with us in the car. Yep. Um, so I stayed back and Liam fell asleep just before we got he there. Did. So I stayed back in the car running aircon on. Um, Clem went in for an explore. And then glorious. we swapped. So <laughs> I went in for an explore. Yeah. Um, and then we were pretty comfortable where we were and that the dogs were okay in the car. Yep. So we left them in the back of the car, just opened it opened all the it way all up. up. Um, yeah. like they're going to protect the car anyway. We're in the shade. Yeah, in the yeah. shade, um, and we just went in for a quick a 20 minute, half an hour swim mm -hmm. as a family. Yep. Um, and then came back and checked Let Liam have a play, um, to pull down. Yeah, because up the top yeah. of Elliot Falls is nice and shallow. Liam had some fun there, and he really liked Twin Falls because that was a great calm spot to swim. Yeah, and it's got a sandy entry point, so great for kids to play. And it probably only gets up to like waist yeah, deep, deep right in that section. Well, so when we were there, bad. anyway. 
Yeah, when we were there. Um, um, and then we went over to Elliot Falls and Clem and I both took it in turns jumping off yeah, the falls. Yeah, so you can jump in, just pick your spot. The water's really clear so you can see where the rocks are. Yeah, and that was fun to jump off the waterfall. It was a good three or so yeah. metres drop. It was good fun. Yeah. So then we went back to the car, Chip and the dogs, they were fine. Um, left that area and we hitched wanted, up again. Yeah, we hitched up again. We wanted to stay at that free camp again um, outside of Rootback Falls, obviously chuckers. So we pinpointed a spot on Wiki Camp that was just down the road at a gravel pit um, at... It was the northern end of the southern section of the OTT. You can see why again. So the OTT confused. split into two. There yeah. are a stretch of the PDR in between. And Wiki Camp said it was... Um, you could get your van in there. And we did. It was fine. Yeah, it was a little it bit was, rough. It was about a cane a bit of corrugated road yeah. um, to get in there. Massive gravel pit. It was actually a working gravel pit because they were grading the road. Yeah, right that's outside. where the graders and everyone set um, up. So it was fine. So they all honked their horns for Liam. They did. We went and watched the trucks, and yeah, he got heaps of toots. He had a great time. And we camped right, right down the back in yeah, the non section amongst the, trees. amongst the trees. Amongst the trees in a little nook that we found. Yeah, had a fire pit um, there, but it was too windy. Again, it was like 54 an hour wind, so we just windy. parked at the back of the van. It rained that night, didn't it? It yeah. was on and off rain for yeah. the next few days. Which we didn't mind because it kept the dust down. No. And then we knew what the road sort of was like and it was even better on the way south where that section was anyway. They had so graded at least half of it. They did, yeah. Um, and then, so we punched straight past Bramwell, junk, uh, Bramwell Station this time. We didn't feel like we needed to stay there again. And we knew there was bitumen from the turn off uh, Weeper <coughs> all the way down to Archer River. So we knew we could actually cover that ground in a day. <coughs> so we really wanted Excuse to stay at Archer River for a couple of days and just wind Actually down. Actually on the river too, not the On the river. House. So we took it all in and we knew that there was this vacant spot, um, a flat spot that you could get the van into right on the river. And we were the only ones there when we got there. So we were pretty stoked. We pulled up. It was a bit boggy. Yeah, a little bit boggy. <laughs> we got um, the van in there. They put it in low range just to sort of pull yeah. through the sand. And then just as we were there, um, met... Pursuit Expeditions. Yeah, Pursuit Expeditions. Lovely um, family. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. had a great afternoon chatting we with did. them, had some drinks. Their little fella was the same age as Liam. They, they had, had an older fun. daughter as well. Yeah. Um, just everyone yeah, had fun really splashing in the, the shallow river. Yeah. Um, we let the dogs off a fair bit there um, just to play ball and stuff, and they went for a swim. We don't mm. let them free run because there's just still risk of baits. Baits are probably less likely in a riverbed. But we had the balls. So, so, yeah, so if they're playing fetch, they're not awesome. picking up food. So they had fun. Uh, we spent two days there, had a full day of just unwinding, um, just trying to reset uh, before coming back down. And we, again, we sort of knew what to expect because we had already done it. So we actually punched from Archer River all the way down to the Palmer River Roadhouse. We did. We actually really wanted to stay in Lakeland because we heard that you could stay at the pub um, and we were itching for a pub feed. Yeah, free stay if you, if you go to the pub and have yeah. a meal. But it just happened that we were coming in on a Monday and the chef doesn't work on Monday nights if he's not off. Fair. So we decided to move on to Palmer River Road. So it's another 20 minutes worth of driving. And what a jackpot! This yeah, place that place was great. So yeah. it was 20 dollars, no, 25 bucks a night. Yeah, for water and power. Water and power, grass site, um, and concrete the food. pad. Oh. These meals were massive. Like, yeah, well worth the coin. Yeah, huge steak, mutt, got a uh, palmy. We got some nuggets for Liam, which we probably didn't need because our meals were so huge. A couple of cold beers, all oh, good value for money. Just what we needed. It's a good way to sort of just down. finish off everything, you know, check over the car and the van again, yeah. do a little bit of cleaning um, and just take it, all in. take it all in that we had just done Cape yeah. York with the caravan. So that's a really good little rest stop to and from, great food, um, yeah. yeah, good outdoor area, just a good spot. Yeah, it's yeah. just a cool pub too, it like is, you've yeah, got a roadhouse. Cool building inside. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And yeah. then uh, we've just moved down from there to Gelatin, which is just up the hill from Fort Douglas, so we spent yeah. the week there so Clem could work again, we could clean the van, like pop the bottom, clean the van, catch the, up on yeah. washing. Despite sweeping and vacuuming every day, the floor is still red after our trip. Yeah, it's um, dang red. So I got that yeah. gumption that you can buy from Woolworths and a scrubbing brush, really good and just did the whole floor and all the, the walls, especially where Liam and the dogs can sort of touch the walls, because we got white. Yeah. Um, and it looks brand new again in there. It's yeah, really had to look how well that worked. Yeah. It just took a bit of elbow grease and some gumption, but Heaps it felt washing. like home again. We hadn't done any washing since, um, like, Van Lager or Yeah, probably the top, yeah. So there was heaps of washing to be done. Um, just cleaning, full clean. So we tag teamed taking Liam uh, so that one of us could clean. And yeah. We had a great time. We liked staying there. It was now Port Douglas. Um, 
Yeah, so we spent some time in Port Douglas, which was yeah. nice. Great yeah. for foreshore, playgrounds, and stuff like that. And it was a good way to just relax from the Cape because it really was exhausting. You're yeah. on the go every day doing something new. The weather was challenging. Um, we found ourselves really quite run down when yeah. we got back. Yeah, we just needed to fall back into our rhythm. You yeah. know, we had spent so much time confined with yeah. each other, but usually we get we a lot of separate time. Yeah. So yeah, to, to get back to our Port Douglas, take, take it in turns and just fall back into our rhythm. We really needed it. And it was only 16 days, but yeah, we felt it. And put everything back where it needed to go in the van and the car. Yep. Um, take the angle out, put the tool bags back where they went. Put the oven door put back the on. the oven door back on. Um, so yeah, the, overall the trip to the Cape was a big adventure. Um, yeah, we something we always wanted to do and I'm yeah. glad we've done it. I'd love to go back again in a slightly different setup. No van next time, yeah. maybe a camp trailer. Yeah. And spend some more time off grid. Yeah. But we ticked off all the boxes that we wanted to on this trip, you know, we did fruit that, we did Elliot, we did Twin Falls, we did some of the OTT, I didn't get to do the northern section, but that's okay. We'll do that next time, I think. Um, and now we know what to expect as well, we can plan a little bit better. I think the largest thing about going was getting correct information. Yeah. Getting so many different reports and watching so many different videos and um, YouTube reviews and everything. Yeah, and just trying to plan yeah. so we could be somewhere where Crane could work, but we didn't know how long it was going to take us to get from spot to spot, so. Yeah. We couldn't plan, like we, and we tried. didn't know if we were going to be able to take the van or not. I yeah. don't know. So it was all, yeah, it was, it was tricky to, to plan. We just had to wing a lot of it. That's why, again, yeah, we didn't book anything until we showed up at the place. Yeah. Um, got lucky, it wasn't busy for us. It was A couple of actually. months before, it looked crazy up there. And like, on our way down, there was just lines of cars yeah. going up. So we I think we just got a lull. The week before school holiday started. Oh, no, let it go, mate. Um, so yeah, there was heaps let of people go, going up yeah. before the school. Alright, we've waffled off long <laughs> enough anyway and yeah. Liam's now awake, dogs are getting a little bit antsy so we're going to close it off here. We hope you enjoyed our summary. It wasn't as quick as I thought it was going to be but we'll see how mm -hmm. it turns out. We hope you find it help, helpful in your planning your Cape York adventure. Yeah. Um, next time we go we're going to do things very differently um, and I think it's more about having a good time and making sure that you get back in one piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like I said, we did everything we wanted to do. The trip was to get our family to the top of Australia safely. We did that. We had a lot of fun along the way. The waterfalls were incredible. The OTT was a lot of fun. Um, but we are glad we're done now. The van feels like home again. It's clean. Um, everything's fine on it, which is really nice. We're a little bit stressy there. Um, and now we can continue our journey. So we've just hit the Capricorn coast. This is a really dog friendly area. You can swim at the beach again. We're really excited. We're ready to get moving again. So we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. We hope you enjoyed this and bye. see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Say bye Liam. Say bye. Bye.